Okay, so moving forward into the lab, you'll see this big monstrosity here. Um, this is uh, networked into our computer systems and when you send me files, I can make inkjet prints. So uh, in this facility, we do uh, inkjet just as much as we do fine art um, handmade prints downstairs. We do do fine art inkjet prints as well. Um, we have done shows uh, for many, many galleries in, in this process. Uh, this is a 60 inch printer. It's big. It's hard to handle 60 inch, but we do get requests for 60 inch by eight foot prints uh, for some of our uh, more prominent artists that are displaying in major galleries. So uh, in, in the inkjet world, it's a perfect process in my opinion. It's been designed uh, incredible, incredible uh, piece of equipment that tags into your digital files that you do. When they come to us, we have profiles on this machine that we, we always do a test print. If we're doing a fine art print for gallery show, we'll do a test print, look at it. And, you know, I have two types of clients on this machine. I have those clients that I do all the work, so they'll send me a raw file and I will uh, do all the processing of the file. I'll do all the dodging, the burning, the contrast control, the color manipulation, and then what, and sharpening. And then once that's done, we send it to this machine um, at printing time. Then there's clients that, and, and it's getting more and more that are working with um, Photoshop all the time and Lightroom, and they actually don't need me. Um, the only time is I request that I do all the sharpening because for sharpening it's best to be done at the printing stage and it's made to the printer that you're doing and the size. So we as printers, we know what works best at different magnifications. Uh, it's very difficult for the artist to understand that because they're not making the print. And, and so I've seen enough prints go through these machines that I know that a certain type of sharpening on a certain file works the best. So if you're working with a phase one system, uh, we're not sharpening as much as we would a file where we someone has sent us a scan and we have to sharpen that up because it's, out of, it's slightly out of focus. Any scanning is done is always out of focus. And we don't want the scanner operator to uh, sharpen. So uh, we, we kind of um, want to do the sharpening here. The profiles, we have them custom made, and we do what's called late binding um, profile, which means we, we attach the profile to the paper at the very end. So we like to see our files come in in Adobe 1998. Um, it can be either 16-bit or 8-bit. It, it doesn't matter to us. This printer can handle both. We, we, we don't like soft proofing. We don't like any of that kind of stuff that you'll hear from a camera shop or someone selling cameras. They, they have all these ideas about how a print should look. But the reality is um, your monitor um, is just a device to see the image. A calibrated monitor in one studio is a different look at a different calibration in another studio. It changes. So we don't put a lot of emphasis on the calibration of the monitor. What we, we look at is the numbers. We read the numbers in LAB, uh, which may not be familiar to a lot of you uh, that are watching this vi video, but LAB is the largest color space that there is. It's how you can control color, you can control density, but it's a learning curve uh, that took me maybe five years to learn, and now I, I, I work with it. I don't expect my clients to understand LAB, but you know when you're when you're doing visual imaging and you're printing, understanding LAB is 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 a good thing to know, because then you can know where to put your highlight with detail, you know where to put your shadow with detail, and it's kind of like my video on on pigments. You know if you don't understand color theory, you're at a disadvantage, and I think you're also at a disadvantage if you don't know how to read. Uh, color in LAB and on any Mac system there is a you can go into the uh, into the applications or in that sidebar and there is a tool called a color meter and that color meter you can put on your desktop and that 
you set it up for LAB and you can start learning how color reacts all the time and density and that's what we use. So uh, we use uh, a matte paper, we use a luster paper, we use a Barcha paper, and we use a, a hot press natural paper. So we, we basically use four different types of paper. Uh, in the past we did what we call press and go, but because of the recent downturn in the economy, this is not happening as much. And we will introduce it again uh, where you send us files that are ready to print and we'll give you bulk printing prices. So if you go into any major uh, lab, uh, they'll have either bulk printing or press and go or, you know, fees for doing it just, you know, at, at, a, at a quantity. And then there's singular printmaking. So I would say um, you look at what we do, you can call us for a quote, we will, we will tell you which way you should go with papers, um, but it's not that hard. And, and it's something that we do a lot of here, uh, and you should feel comfortable being able to send files to us uh, from iPhone right up through phase one camera systems.